Hi everyone, this is Dr. Saeed Falafini from Cal Poly Pomona. In this video, I'm going to talk about three examples related to finding a city state probabilities in uh, stochastic processes. So in the first example, we are going to go back to the cola example case. So if you remember, we had two cola, cola one and cola two produced by two companies. Let's assume there are 100 million customers out there and uh, these customers buy uh, one cola every week for each cola there is one dollar cost and then when it's sold there is two dollar revenue associated with that cola so for 500 million dollar a year an advertising company can uh, produce some ads that is going to decrease number of people who are a cola one drinker and they are going to switch to cola two in their next purchase so uh, basically, these ads are supposed to bring down the percentage of those people who switch from Cola 1 to Cola 2 in the next purchase uh, from 10% to 5%. So then the question is that should the company that produces Cola 1 go ahead and pay for this ad or not? Let's look at the problem again. So in the previous scenario, the one step transition probability matrix was as this matrix. And uh, and then the city state probabilities that we calculated was 0.67 for COLA 1 and 0.33 for COLA 2. So, and as it was stated in this problem, we have $100 million customers. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, so that means that in the city state, when this system reaches equilibrium, um, if we stop the system and pick any random customer, we expect that with the chance of 67%, that person is drinking cola 1, and with the chance of 33%, that person is drinking cola 2. Now, this company has the possibility of initiating some advertisement, and this advertisement is supposed to change the percentage of people that are switching from cola 1 to cola 2 to 5%. So this advertising company is uh, supposed to change the percentage of people who are a cola one drinker right now and in the next percent are going to change to cola two to five percent. So the initial value was 10 percent. So it's supposed to go down to five percent. So if that happens, then the probability of a person who is a cola one drinker sticking to cola one in the next purchase is going to go up to 95 percent. And so nothing changes with respect to cola two. So the question is that um, should this company go ahead and pay half a million dollars for this advertising and make such that they can make this change in the one step transition priorities? So should we do that or not? What we have to do in this systems, in this scenarios to be able to answer this question is to go ahead and find the city state priorities under this setting to find out what is the chance that in this setup in the long run in the city state, if we stop the system and we pick a person, a random person, what is the chance that the person is cola one drinker and what is the chance that the person is a cola two drinker? So, um, basically, uh, the values of pi one and pi two, uh, are going to tell us what is going to be the market share of cola one and cola two. Once we find the percentage of people that are drinking cola 1 and are drinking cola 2 in the long run, we can see how the market share of cola 1 has changed by this change in the transition, in the one step transition probability matrix. And if that change in the market share would bring enough profit to justify the half a million dollar that we have to pay for the marketing part. So let's go ahead and find uh, pi 1 and pi 2 related to this new transition probability matrix. So the formula that we have to uh, follow is pi multiplied by 1 is the, tra one is the transition probability matrix p equals to pi. So that's going to be, now we can go ahead and do the matrix multiplication. So we have to multiply vector pi by the first column of matrix p. That's going to be and similarly, we have to multiply vector pi by the second column of matrix P. And that's going to be, so here we have two unknowns, pi 1 and pi 2. And we have, we need two independent equations to be able to find these two unknowns. But as we stated um, in previous video, uh, when we put the equations related to pi P 
equals to pi one of these equations is going to be dependent to the rest of the equations so we can drop any one of these equations it doesn't matter we can drop any one of them and add the other equation that we know is always true for any um, stochastic system pi 1 plus pi 2 equals to 1. Now we have two equations. Equation 1, equation 2. These two equations are independent from each other. We can solve this set of equations to find the two unknowns pi 1 and pi 2. And if we do that, the values, the new values for pi 1 is going to be 0 0.8 and the new value for pi 2 is going to be 0 0.2. What does that mean? That means with this new transition probability matrix that we will get if we perform the advertisement in the long run when the system reaches a steady state or equilibrium uh, if we stop the system and pick any random person from this population there is 80 percent chance that the person is drinking cola one and 20 percent chance that the person is drinking cola two so in other words uh, cola one has 80 percent market share and cola two has 20 percent market share and if you remember the initial values for the market share for cola one and cola two where so that means the market share for cola one has gone from 67 percent to 80 percent so that's a great progress but we have to see if this um, increase in the market share would bring enough uh, profit to justify the half a million dollar that we have to pay for that advertisement so to be able to do so let's see what is the uh, profit under this scenario uh, so when the market share has increased, so what is our new uh, profit? If you remember, we have 100 million customers and each one of these customers is going to do, uh, is going to buy a cola in each week and we have 52 weeks in a year overall. And for each one of these colas, we are going to sell it for $2, but at the same time, we already have paid $1 as a cost. So we are going to have total $1 as the profit. So this is basically the total profit of this company. Uh, however, we also know that we are we are going to pay five hundred million dollars as the cost of this advertising. So the result is going to be this value. What does that mean? This means that with this new setup for the transition probability matrix and the increase in the market share, it definitely will make sense for us to pay the five hundred million dollars for the advertising. Because at the end, the profit associated with this advertising um, is large. Even after we deduct the um, money that we have to pay for the advertising, still the profit that is going to stay is large enough to justify the payment for these ads. So this was just one example as how the concept of stochastic processes and steady state properties can be used in a marketing analysis. In the second example, we are going to look at a three by three one step transition probability matrix. So the transition probability matrix is as below. So we want to see what is the, uh, what are the city state probabilities in this system. So the first thing, remember, we have to check for any stochastic system before we calculate the city state probabilities is that is this, uh, Markov chain an ergodic Markov chain or not, because the city state probabilities exist only for ergodic Markov chain. So the three conditions that we have to check for any ergodic Markov chain is that if all the states are recurrent, if all of them are communicating, and if all of them are aperiodic. So I recommend that you pause the video at this point and check if this Markov chain is an ergodic Markov chain. So check these three conditions. So next, to be able to find the city state probabilities, we have to solve this famous equations. Pi, uh, vector pi multiplied by one step transition probability matrix P equals to vector pi. So that's going to be, so obviously since in this um, Markov chain, we have three states, state one, state two, state three, our vector pi will have three elements as well pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, the probability is that in the long run we are in a state 1, we are in a state 2, or we are in a state 3. So now let's write down the equations that are coming out of this matrix multiplication. So first we have to multiply vector pi by the first column of the transition matrix P. Then we have to multiply vector pi by the second column of the transition probability matrix P. And lastly we have to multiply vector pi by the third column of the transition probability matrix P. So then 
these three equations would come up. So we have three unknowns, pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, and we need three independent equations. So as I said before, when we put the equations that are coming out of pi p equals to pi, always, always one of the equations is dependent to the rest of the equations. So we can drop any one of these equations. So for example, I'm going to drop equation 1 and, um, and I'm going to add that famous equation that holds for all the uh, Markov chains. So that equation is pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi 3 equals to 1. And as I'm going to write down the other two equations, I'm going to bring all the pi's to the left side. So here I'm going to bring the pi 2 to the left side and in this equation I'm going to bring by pi 3 to the left side. So as a result these equations are going to be so now we have three independent equations and three unknowns. We can solve this set of equations to find the answer for pi 1, pi 2, pi 3. So to be able to do that, let's go ahead and write down the matrix representation of these three equations. So in this matrix representation of those three equations, uh, as you can see, the first matrix is basically the matrix of coefficients that we saw in previous uh, slide. So for example, the coefficients of pi 1, pi 2, pi 3 in the first equations are 1, 1, 1, and that's what we see in the first row. The coefficients of uh, pi 1, pi 2, pi 3 in the second equations, uh, second equation are uh, 0.2 minus 0 0.6, 0 0.1, and that's what we see in the second row as well. And similarly, the numbers that we see in the third row of this matrix are the coefficients of pi 1, pi 2, pi 3 in the third equations, multiplied by the um, column vector pi. And what we see on the right side is basically the value that on the that we see on the right side of those three equations. So the right side value that we see here are 1, 0, 0, and that's exactly what we see here on the right side column vector. So we are going to call this a coefficient matrix as A, this um, column vector of unknowns as pi, and this uh, right side uh, vector as B. So this is going to be A multiplied by vector pi equals to B. Just pay attention that there are three unknowns pi 1, pi 2, pi 3 are in this vector here. So if I want to find a vector pi, what I can do is to multiply both sides of this equation by the inverse of matrix A. So if I multiply both sides of these equations by A inverse, so I will have A inverse multiplied by A pi equals to A inverse multiplied by vector B. As you may remember from the linear algebra, if I multiply any matrix A by its inverse, the result is going to be identity matrix I. And when I multiply identity matrix I by any matrix or vector, the result is going to be the vector or matrix itself. So then this is going to be pi equals to A inverse multiplied by B. So for us to be able to calculate the unknowns in the vector pi, we have to calculate uh, the coefficient matrix A, then cal calculate the inverse of this coefficient matrix and then multiply it by the right hand side vector B. I'll show you next how potentially we can use Excel to calculate the inverse uh, of the matrix or the multiplication of the matrices. After doing the calculations, the value of vector pi is going to be as. So these are the city state properties associated with state 1, state 2, and state 3. So in this example, this is the uh, coefficient matrix A, and this is the right-hand side, uh, right side vector B. So the size of this matrix is 3 by 3. So the size of the inverse of this matrix is going to be 3 by 3 as well. So first I highlight a three by three area and then I put equal and then M inverse, matrix inverse. And then I pick the array or the matrix that needs to be inverse. I close the parentheses and then I have to press shift, control and then enter. And this is going to be the inverse of the matrix. It's very, very important for you guys to Press shift, control, and enter, and not just the enter. Um, for, uh, and then we, we see the inverse of the matrix here. So now 
this is the inverse of the matrix A, and we know that we have to multiply the inverse of matrix A by vector B. So the um, inverse of the matrix A is a three by three matrix. The vector B is a three by one matrix. Uh, the result is going to be a three by one matrix as well. So first highlight the cells that represent the dimension of the results, then equal M, Metri M malt matrix multiplications is basically what we have to use as a function. And then uh, we pick the first matrix, that's A inverse, and then comma, and then we pick the second matrix, that's vector B. And then close parenthesis, and again, shift, control, enter. So this is going to be the results. The last example that we have are related to the restaurants in a city. So in a specific city, there is a Chinese restaurant, Mexican restaurant, and a pizza place. So people have the option to eat in any one of these restaurants or eat at home. So um, assume that 20% of people who eat in a Chinese restaurant uh, right now will go to a Mexican restaurant for their next meal, 20% of them will eat at home and 30% of them go to a pizza place. From those who eat in a Mexican restaurant right now, 10% of them will go to a pizza place for their next meal, 25% will go to Chinese restaurant and 25% will eat at home. And from those who eat at the at the pizza place right now, 30% of them will eat at home for their next meal, 30% of them will go to a Chinese restaurant, and 10% of them will go to a Mexican restaurant. And lastly, for all of those people who eat at home, 20% 20 of them will go to a Chinese restaurant in their next meal, 25% will go to Mexican, and 30% will go to a pizza place. So we want to calculate... Um, the probability of going to each one of these restaurants when the system is in equilibrium. So that means um, in the long run, in the steady state, in the equilibrium, if we stop this city and pick any person in this city, what is the probability that they are eating in a at home or at a Chinese restaurant or at a Mexican restaurant or as a, at the a pizza place. So those are basically city state behavior of this system. So basically what we want to do is to find the values of vector pi for this system. So let's assume pi one shows the probability that the person is eating at home. Pi two shows the probability that the person is eating at the Chinese. Pi 3 shows the probability that the person is eating at the Mexican restaurant. And finally, Pi 4 shows the probability that the person is eating at the pizza place. So we want to go ahead and find the values of vector pi for this stochastic system. So now let's go ahead and put this transition part matrix together. So obviously the state of the system, which is the place in which people eat or the type of food that people eat, has four values. Value 1 means the chance of eating at home, eating at the Chinese, eating at the Mexican, and eating at the, at the pizza place. So the one-step transition probability matrix P will be a 4 by 4 uh, matrix. So, so from the problem statement that we know, if a person is eating at the Chinese restaurant right now, there is 20% chance that for the next meal the person eats at home, 20% chance that the person is eating at the Mexican restaurant, and 30% chance that the person is eating at the pizza place. And 1 minus the sum of this value is the probability that the person continues eating at the Chinese restaurant. If a person is eating at a Mexican restaurant right now, there is 10% chance that the person is going to eat at the, at the pizza place in the next uh, meal. There is 25% chance that the person is going to eat at the Chinese place for the next meal. There is 25% chance that the person is going to eat at home. And 1 minus the sum of these properties is going to show that 40% uh, chance, there is 40% chance that the person is going to continue eating at the Mexican restaurant. 
and the, if the person is eating at the pizza place right now, there is 30% chance that the person is going to eat at home for the next meal, 30% chance that the person is going to eat at the Chinese restaurant, and 10% chance that the person is going to eat at the Mexican restaurant. And one minus the sum of these values is shows that there is also 30% chance that the person is going to continue eating at the pizza place. And lastly, if the person is eating at home right now, there is 20% chance that the person is going to eat at the Chinese restaurant for the next meal, 25% chance of eating at the at the Mexican place and 30% chance of eating at the pizza place and 1 minus the sum of these values shows 25% chance for continuing eating at home for the next meal. So this is the one step transition probability matrix for this problem that we extracted from problem state. So now before we go ahead and calculate the steady state probabilities we have to find out if this Markov chain is ergodic. And remember the three conditions for a Markov chain to be ergodic is that all the states are recurrent, they communicate, and they are aperiodic. At this point, I want to ask you guys to pause the video and check if these three conditions hold in this uh, Markov chain. Um, so next, we are going to go ahead and uh, find the steady state transition properties for this stochastic system. To do so, we have to first put our famous equations of pi p equals to pi together. As I said, since there are four possible states in the system, the vector pi, the steady state probabilities, has four elements, pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, pi 4. So this uh, vector is going to be multiplied by one step transition probability matrix p, and which is going to be equal to vector pi. So now we have to multiply vector pi by the first column of matrix P, and that's going to be the first equation. Then we multiply vector pi by the second column of vector P, that's going to be the second equation, then by the third column, and then by the fourth column, and those are going to be the third and fourth equations. So we have four unknowns, those are the elements of vector pi, pi 1 to pi 4, and we need four independent equations so that we can solve the set of equations that we have and find the values of those four unknowns. But as I have said several times, when we put together the equations that are coming out of um, pi p equals to pi, always, always one of the equations is dependent to the rest. So we can drop any one of these equations, it doesn't matter, and um, for example, here I'm going to drop the first equation and I'm going to add the famous uh, equation that we have for the states of a system, which is pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi 3 plus pi 4 equals to 1. As I have said before, why this equation holds? Because in the long run, the system is finally at one of these states. The system is either at state 1 or state 2 or state 3 or state 4. So as a result, the sum of these probabilities end up to be equal to 1. So now I have four equations and these equations are independent from each other. So I can solve them to find the values of steady state properties. So to do so, for the other three equations, I'm going to take the pi's to the left side of the equation and um, and if I do that, the final results are as we can see here. Now we have four independent equations, four unknowns. We can solve them to find the values of uh, steady state properties. So uh, first, remember based on the uh, formula that we said was that vector pi equals to uh, a inverse multiplied by vector b. What is a inverse? So ve matrix A is the matrix of coefficients in this set of equations. And matrix uh, and vector b is the vector of the right hand side values. Once we calculate, once we find out the the matrix of coefficients, we are going to calculate the inverse of this matrix and then multiply it by the right hand side uh, vector b. This is the uh, matrix of coefficient a, which has been inverse 
That's the power of 1 minus 1. Multiply by the right hand side vector B. So A inverse multiplied by B is going to give us the values of the vector pi. And as we showed before, we can use Excel to find the inverse of matrix A and um, and also then multiply this inverse by the right hand side vector P. So to find the inverse, we have to, we can potentially use the function M inverse, that's matrix inverse that exists in Excel. And to be able to multiply the inverse of matrix A by the right side, right hand side vector B, we can use the function M mult, which is related to matrix multiplications. If we do that, the final values for the steady state properties is what we have shown here. So these are the values for pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, and pi 4. So these values are going to help us to see in the long run when the system reaches a steady state. Uh, if we stop the system and we pick any customer from this city, what is the chance that they are eating at home? What is the chance that they are eating at the Chinese restaurant? What is the chance that they are eating at the Mexican restaurant? And what is the chance that they are eating at the pizza place? So these values basically show the market share of any one of these restaurants in this city. So as we can see, the market shares are pretty much similar. And it's that it's just that Chinese uh, restaurant, Chinese uh, restaurant has a, a little bit a higher market share.